Greetings from SGPJ Lucknow. In this video, we will be demonstrating robotic hepatic vaginostomy with the aid of ICG fluorescence for a case of congenital colidocal malformation with type 7 ductal anatomical variation. Biliary ductal anatomical variations are common and pose a technical challenge for the MIS treatment of congenital colidocal malformations. The branching pattern of the right hepatic bile duct is used to classify the biliary ductal anatomy. Type 7 variations are unclassified and extremely rare. Failure to recognize and appropriately manage the ductal anatomical variations during surgery for colidocal malformations can cause serious intra and post-op complications. ICG fluorescence in hepatobiliary surgery is used for biliary mapping as it uh, results in precise real-time visualization and identification of the intraoperative anatomy. ICG fluorescence helps for safer biliary dissection and reconstruction. The adequate visualization of the bile ducts can be achieved when the ICG is administered between 16 to 18 hours before surgery. The dose is usually 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 mg per kg. The ICG uh, fluorescence system that is a firefly is already integrated into the Da Vinci robotic platform. So this six year old girl presented to us with recurrent episodes of pancreatitis for the past two years. These episodes were associated with transient jaundice. The MRCP shows a type 1 fusiform congenital colidocal malformation with an abnormally long pancreatic biliary man union. However, you can see there is an aberrant right posterior sectoral duct inserting into the distal end of the CBD that is a type 7 malformation. These are the port positions for a robotic hepatic ostomy. We use four robotic ports and one assistant ports. The robotic ports are placed in a straight line as shown. Uh, the distance between the working ports should be 6 to 8 centimeters and the distance of the optical port from the target organ should be 8 to 10 centimeters. So the first step in surgery is to take a falciform hitch to retract the liver. Then we take a gallbladder hitch uh, to retract the gallbladder and the right lobe of the liver towards the diaphragm. We use ICG on entry to see uh, what appears like a dilated cystic duct and the dilated common bile duct. We start dissecting in the Callet's triangle. Uh, again, ICG is used and we see that the cystic duct is dilated and tortuous. And we can see a dilated common hepatic duct which is joining the cystic duct to form the common bile duct. We yet cannot see the aberrant duct seen on MRCP. Then the posterior medial dissection is started uh, between the common bile duct and the uh, right hepatic artery. The posterior medial dissection shows us the main portal vein. We then start dissecting the posterior lateral plane uh, and we are able to create the plane between the dilated CBD and the main portal vein. The distal part of the CBD is then dissected into the pancreas. ICG again shows the distal CBD, the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct. The CBD is dissected well into the pancreatic crater till it tapers. It is doubly clipped and divided. We then slit the distal part of the CBD and we see here that the two openings, one corresponding to the CBD and another corresponding to the aberrant uh, duct joining the distal CBD can be seen. We cannulate the aberrant opening uh, with a Foley's catheter and fix it with a suture. Uh, the cystic artery is then dissected in the Callet's triangle, uh, clipped and divided. Uh, we uh, intermittently use the ICG to do biliary mapping. The common bile duct is then slit further and uh, we then see the uh, three openings that is the cystic duct opening into the uh, common bile duct uh, and the common hepatic duct and the aberrant opening. This is a cystic duct uh, and we see that the aberrant duct is uh, running on the posterior lateral wall of the cystic duct and the common bile duct. The common hepatic duct common bile duct junction is divided. And we see here that the opening of the common hepatic duct is isolated. We divide the cystic duct to see better posteriorly and here we see uh, that the aberrant uh, duct is coming down behind the cystic duct and 
was opening into the distal part of the CBT. We removed the foleys and the right posterior sectoral duct is now divided at the level of the common hepatic duct. We use uh, energy sparingly so as not to uh, uh, make the uh, ductal margin ischemic. This is the common hepatic duct with uh, right anti anterior sectoral duct and the left hepatic duct and this is the right posterior sector duct, so sectoral duct. The ductoplasty is started. We use 5O polydazenone suture. Uh, this is an interrupted anastomosis between the aberrant right posterior sectoral duct and the common hepatic duct. Uh, we take interrupted sutures at uh, regular intervals and uh, the aim is to do a single ostia hepaticojejunostomy. Uh, so the single ostia for hepaticojejunostomy is ready. Next, the DJ is identified. Uh, different colored sutures are used for marking proximal and distal. Uh, mesentric window is created and endo GIA stapler is fired to create a rule limb. The site for jejunostomy is chosen. Marking sutures are placed. Here, this is a bigger child, so we are doing an intracorporeal jejunostomy with the help of an endo GIA stapler. The stapler is fired and uh, and the opening for the stapler is then sutured with fiber polydesign on in a run, running fashion. We place few seromuscular sutures to cover the staple line and this is the completed jejunojejunostomy. A retrocolic window is created and the rule limb is taken to the supracolic compartment via the mesocolon. A jejunotomy is made in the rule limb the hepatic ostomy starts by a left corner stitch. We use interrupted sutures on both posterior layer and anterior layer. Uh, usually use uh, 5 polydazenone. These are the posterior layer with interrupted sutures. It's very important to place sutures on either side of the common wall between the right posterior sectoral duct and the uh, common hepatic duct. This is the right corner stitch and we see that the posterior layer is complete. The anterior layer is again done in a similar fashion in, uh, with interpret sutures. And here we see that the single ostia hepaticojejunostomy is completed. The gallbladder is then removed from the gallbladder bed. Mesentric windows are closed. Uh, the specimen is removed and the drain is placed in the subhepatic region. This child had an uneventful intraop course. Blood loss was minimal. Our post-op feeding protocol is to progress from clear liquids on day 1 to liquids on day 2, semi-solids on day 3 and solid full feeds on day 4. We use a patient control analgesia pump for uh, IV analgesia. The drain is usually removed on day 3 and patients are discharged, discharged once on full feeds and pain-free by post-op day 5 or 6. At 5 months follow-up, this Child is asymptomatic with normal liver function test and ultrasound showing no intrahepatic bleary radical dilatation and scintigraphy showing normal clearance. This was our 50th case and was done about one year back. Thank you very much for a patient hearing.